so let's talk about farming and the economy of elite balloon areas and i say elite balloon areas because as of now we only have one boss in the game that is balloon areas but i expect a few more to be added in the future and the defending strategies for each individual boss might be a little different but overall the towers and farming strategies will remain the same for their elite versions so by now we're a few weeks into playing around with elite balloon areas and i gotta say these strategies have been evolving pretty quickly it's like there is a new thing happening every single week on the defensive side but on the farming side as well and I think we're doing an amazing job of optimizing the gameplay as each new boss comes around. So in this video let's talk about the different ways of farming in boss events and see which different farming strategies can be used. So the separation of farming methods is pretty simple, it's not banks or druids or boats. But it's actually a bit different than that and it involves two main ideas behind the whole farming process. The first one is farming by advancing the rounds faster or as I call it using RBI or round based income towers. I couldn't come up with a cool name for this because farming by advancing the rounds faster doesn't really sound as a cool name for the overall strategy so I'll just call it round based income or RBI farming for short. So how does this work? Well, some of the money generating methods in the game like the banana research facility the merchantman or the monkeyopolis produce a certain amount of money on a round basis. So for example, the BRF or the banana research facility produces five crates per round and each crate is worth $300. Each merchantman produces $200 per round and the monkeyopolis can produce up to 10 crates per round and each crate will be worth the amount of farms sacrificed to it. So the income is fixed, right? And irregardless of how long a round lasts, the amount of money produced will always be the same. And knowing this, we can adjust our defenses to fully utilize the RBI. The reason why this is important is because Blunarius or any boss balloon moves independently of the rounds. So let's say we are on tier 2 elite Blunarius, which as you guys know, it appears around 60 and lasts up to round 79. You can have tier 2 Blunarius be here near the middle of the track and you can be on round 74 or you can have him be in the same exact spot and you can be on round 67. Now the difference that this makes is that if we are around 74 we would have collected more money from our RBI towers and this means that we can afford to buy other farms or defenses earlier which snowballs even further later down the line. So knowing this the first strategy or idea which is advancing the rounds faster means that if our source of income is an RBI tower so a banana farm, a trade empire, rubber to gold or the monkeyopolis you should be focusing on placing a few towers from your defenses towards the start of the track so that the balloons get popped as soon as they come out, the round ends faster and then you get the money from the next round even faster. Now this creates a nice snowball effect where you're going to be able to boost your farming even further as rounds pass but also buy the appropriate defenses for the boss balloon that you're facing. So here's an example from one of my previous runs. This is the Elite Blunarius from week 7 on Winter Park where I'm using the Monkeyopolis and the Banana Central to farm. So both are RBI towers and we're currently on tier 3 of Elite Blunarius. So the Temple and the Mad are the towers that are focusing on dealing with Blunarius. But near the start of the track I have a 205 tag zone which has the sole purpose of popping these rounds as soon as they come out so that the next round comes out faster and I get more money from the Monkeyopolis and the Banana Central to upgrade my defenses. And I think that the tag shooter is the perfect tower to do this. It's cheap, it's effective, the overdrive and the tag zone are usually used to defend against tier 1 and tier 2 of elite balloon areas and after you're done with the boss you can leave it afterwards for it to deal with the normal rounds and you can focus on your defenses and farming instead. The second idea of farming is the opposite and it's farming by stalling the rounds and I call these TBI towers or time based income towers. So TBI farming involves farming using abilities and the towers that fall under this category are the jungles bounty druid, the support chinook and special population Sally, the supply drop and elite snipers and the monkey nomics ability from the banana farm. So the idea behind this type of farming is that you want to have a single round remain on screen as long as possible so that you can use your farming abilities more times. Now keep in mind that all of these abilities have a limited amount of times that they can be activated or used in one single round. So you can activate the jungles bounty, supply drop and support chinook abilities a total of 3 times per round and the monkey nomics ability can be used a maximum of 2 times in one single round. So the way that we keep the rounds on screen for longer is by positioning our defenses more towards the middle of the track wherever that might be for a certain map. But also using towers like the Moab Glue, the Moab Shove and the Main Moab to slow down the Moab class balloons or towers like the Glue Hose, the Ice, the Balloon Impact and Downdraft or Support Chinahelis to stall the normal balloons. 
And now comes the most important question and that is should you even care about advancing the rounds faster or stalling them on purpose to make more money and how much of a difference does it make? Well personally I haven't had an issue farming with both RBI towers or TBI towers at all but I think this is due to the boss events mainly being on beginner maps so log maps with lots of free space to farm and to place the towers wherever we want. But for the casual players or just the new players that are always falling short on farming, I think this is definitely something that should be kept in mind while playing these boss events. So try and think about how you're going to be farming, whether it's by using RBI or TBI towers, or start with the one and end with another. So for example, you can start with Druid farming in the early to mid game, and then transition into a Monkeyopolis later on, which is what we usually do, and then use the right towers and positioning to help you make even more money in your runs. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.